My name's Sharon and I'm from Made in Rags and I make um, toothbrush rag rugs out of old sheets. And what I want to do today is show you step by step how to make a oblong, which you could also make into a square, um, toothbrush rug. So if you look, yeah, there's a nice little oblong rug. So I'm going to go through step by step on how to do this. First of all, you need to get your sheets and what I've got here for demonstration purposes is two different colours and all I'm doing is I'm just using my thumb as a measure so a good thumb width just cut and I've folded the sheets over so I've got one cut I'll just do two pieces just to show you. Okay, now all I need to do with those two pieces of material, obviously I'd carry on and carry on until I've got them all, is just prepare them. And to prepare them is that there is the two ends of that one piece. You see that? I've just still got that folded over and just fold the edge over there and just make a little slit. Now I've got a slit in each end of the material. I'll place that there. I'll do the same with this one. So that is how you cut and prepare your strips. Now I'll leave it there for a minute until I get on to the next bit. No. Okay again. What I want to do now is show you how to start off. So you've got your strips of material and what I'm also showing you here is how to join your strips. So you've got the slits in the end of each strip. You place one on top of the other and you bring up the end through here, pull that through and just tuck. So that's joining your strips and now what I want to do is make the first row of stitches. So what I need to do here is have this one that I'm going to be knotting onto as tight as I can get it. So all I've done is place my foot on the other end and now I'm going to take that round up through. There's one. That's my first knot. Keep going until you have as many knots as the width of the mid, uh, rug that you're going to want. So I'm going to do 12 on this one. It gives you time to see how I'm doing it as well. This, As long as this is nice and tight, you're going to be able to work with it. Four. You'll feel as you're going that maybe you're going down and trying to get to the floor. I've got a little bit more material there, so I'm going to let it loose. So I'm staying at this height. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a little bit loose. Seven. Eight. Nine. Can you see here? I've let go of all those. I don't need to hold on to those. Ten. Eleven. And last one now. Twelve. Place them on there. So that 
is the start of your rug. So there's 12 stitches there. And I'll leave it there a second and then come back to show you how I start the rug from here. Okay, so I've just placed that on there. So that's the start of the rug. And as you can see, this one's got a little bit short because I've used most of that one to, to knot onto this white one. And I'm going to just add another piece now. And this basically is it. You just keep adding pieces as you're going along. I'm going to add another piece here, pull that up through there, exactly the same as I did before. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what these two pieces are. I call them a runner and a worker. And at this moment in time, this white one is the runner because the worker is the one that knots on to the runner. So this is the worker and this is the runner. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos or anything that I've done in the past, these usually stay separate, but just let me show you how I'm doing it now. So to do the square one, the difference is what I'm going to do now is just going to turn that over. Oops. You see how I did that? So that was there, your runner there, your worker here. So I'm just turn that over. Now your runner is normally close to your work. Now if you see, and I've turned that over, and now it's actually the worker that's close to the work. So this is how I do my square rugs. I'm now changing. So I'm now using the runner and threading it, the needle, and making it the worker. If this doesn't make sense at the moment, just bear with me, it will, it will. So now this is the first stitch, can you see here? I'm going into that one and I'm going underneath this one. I'm trying to do this slowly to start with. So I'm going underneath underneath this one. Just when you're first starting off, you just if I'm hiding things here with my hand, all I'm doing is trying to keep that nice and steady and flat. I'm not doing anything weird and wonderful other than letting that drop onto my thumb there. That's my first stitch. Now I'm going into the next one. And again, if I do this, it's just to keep that flat. So there is the one that I'm going underneath. And if I place my thumb here, just on that one that's going underneath, can you see that? Place my thumb there so that it stays nice and close. And when you first start it, and when it hits my thumb, that's the tension that I'm going to have. Take my thumb out. Yeah. I'm going into the next stitch. This first row is the most difficult. Again, okay. I'll try and show you. If I didn't place my thumb here to keep this close, what you're going to see happen is this goes all over the place. Well, I can't help. It, this is moving, it's just easier just to place your thumb there, just to keep it nice and close. Do it again. Try and move that out of the way so you can see. What's happening over there doesn't matter, it's just this bit here. I've got nice close and I've got full control of that bit there and it's staying close to the stitches. Turn your thumb out. Sometimes it's easier to put you. Nice and stitch. Another thing to try and 
keep your eye on is this here that at this moment in time because it's not got any weight with it wants to double over like that and then you're wondering where your stitch is just try and keep that nice and flat I'm just going to add another piece of material Always place your new piece on top of the piece that you're already working with. Just give that a little tug. Sometimes it's a little bit stiff. Thread your needle again. There's another stitch there. Place the thumb just to keep that close. As I say, if I look like I'm hiding things with my hand, all I'm doing is trying to keep that nice and flat. It does become easier once you've got past this first row. Okay, so that is your first row. And at the moment, as you can see, it looks absolutely terrible but the more you go. So what I'm going to do now is do what I did before, flip this over and then if you remember I said the, the runner is always the one close to the rug but when we were on this side this one was actually the worker. So I flipped it over and now it's close to the rug so I'm going to make it the runner. I'm going to do that again this was the worker because this was working into the stitches and that was the runner. So I turn that over and the one closest to the rug is now the worker so I'm going to make it the runner. And this one is furthest away so I'm going to take the needle off there. I'm going to thread this. Is the first stitch. I'm going to go in there underneath this one. It's because I've just added that piece of material that's quite big now. But that's way out of the way. I'm not taking any notice of that because I have my thumb on that one. Pull this through. underneath. My thumb's keeping that nice and straight. So I'm not hiding anything here, I'm just keeping that nice and flat. stays there and doesn't twist. Flip down underneath the runner. Placing my thumb there, which has two jobs at the moment. It's keeping that nice and close and when that pulls on my thumb, don't pull it too tight, that is the tension. I'll just take the thumb out. It's also important as you're doing this, the runner, never pull on the runner. You always want your runner nice and loose which 
there's a good reason for placing your hand on it there so it doesn't become tight if it becomes tight you're going to pull your rug up and it won't lay flat if you were doing a round one if you pulled on the runner you'd end up with the ball I'm at the end again, so I flip it over. That one now is here, and this one will be the one that I use to work with. This first stitch, I'm going into that underneath this one keeping it all in place with my hand and my thumb. See me straightening that, I'm not pulling on it, I'm only straightening it. do one more turn and then we'll come back to it when I've made the rug a little bit larger. first practicing as well it's probably good to have two colors so that you don't get confused about which side you're on I mean there I just knew I had one last stitch that was a blue one flip that over this one now is the one that's closest so that is the runner this one I need to add a new piece on as well to start this first stitch again. I'll just do that first stitch and then we'll come back to it. Let's try that and it's hit the thumb don't worry about this this is just because I've just put a new piece on and just sometimes it can be a little bit long but it soon goes down okay I'll keep working with this and come back to it when it's a little bit bigger. Hi again. Um, what we have here now is we've got the finished length of rug. As you can see, turn it over. Yeah, and obviously if you wanted it wider, you just make more stitches when you start off with your um, starting stitches. I did 12 
Uh, but if you want it wider, you just do more. And if you want it longer or shorter, um, you do less. You just, it's basically when you've had enough or when you feel that it's the right size for you. I want to, want to show you here is on this one just to show you how to finish off. Now, the way I do it, so you've got your, your two pieces of material. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently, very gently, just knot them together. Because I don't want to be pulling on that runner at all. So I'm just going to knot that nice and neat. And then just for added um, security of them falling out, which they won't fall out because they're knots, but just to do this. You see you've got stitches here that you just gently go through your stitches. About five. Again, all I'm doing there with the hand is just making sure that none, nothing pulls tight. And keep that down there. That's hidden in there. You could put a little stitch in there if you want to. I actually don't, but if you were feeling that it wasn't going to stay in. And the same with this one. Just find a little space that you think it's not going to show through so much. Just gently pull that through. Cut that off. And again, if you wanted to, you could just put a little stitch there. And just make it. Can you see how I get more comp to this one? Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope I've done it slowly enough so that you do understand it. If you if you need to look at how to do the basic sticks, you can look at some of the other um, YouTube postings that I've done. And if you like what I've done, please press the like button and subscribe that would be great and if you go to the link at the bottom of the um, YouTube I've put made in rags if you go to that link that will take you to my Facebook page where I have pinned my eBay page if you wanted to buy a kit from me or you wanted to buy anything that um, I'm selling on eBay I do sell other kits as well that would take you straight to that so thank you again for watching